This is Walnut from Raising Awesome. This is a deep dive video for an up and coming project. In two months, we will begin projects to aid those who need assistance around the home, such as the handicapped and the elderly. In this video, I'm going to do a tutorial on using Autodesk Fusion 360. We are designing a robot that can carry items around the house and even upstairs. We got the idea from Boston Dynamics. There's a lot to be designed, but let's start at the drawing board of Autodesk Fusion. Let's get to it. I start by attaching a canvas. I go looking for an image I downloaded of the Boston Dynamics robot. And you just land it on your canvas. You can scale it to whatever size. I'm going to do it such that the, uh, the lower, the leg below the knee will be about a foot long. And then I open up a sketch and start drawing points for a line. I'm just going to trace this leg. I'm just doing from the knee down. You notice the way this joint works, it has two pivot points. One, it, it pivots the, the uh, I guess I'll call this the shin bone. And the way it pivots it is it looks to be a linear actuator pushes on the end of it or pushes and pulls on the end of it. I may not do it just that way. Uh, I'll experiment around with that. But the first thing to do is make the part and then we can play around with the different ways to drive it. So here I did a line, but now I'm going to switch over to a three-point arc. You drop one point, two point, and then you drag out your third point to complete the arc. And then back to the line tool, dropping my points. I am not looking for perfection here at all. We are prototyping. So the idea is to rapidly get to the point where we can start coding and getting motion so we can refine the design. Um, if I spent all my time trying to uh, draw this to perfection now, I'd never get the project done. So there we go, did another three-point arc, and we got the basic shape of it in its entirety. Let me get the uh, cutout parts and draw the straights with the line tool and back to a three-point arc. And then the lower one, we're going to arc that one upwards. Make it a little stronger joint there. And now what I'd like to do is I need to get some thickness. I, I need to uh, basically make maybe a quarter of an inch or an eighth inch. And now I'm just going to select the exterior there and run the offset, sketch offset. Bring that out about an eighth of an inch. fix that gap here we go and drag her out so now that I've uh, I've uh, extruded it out I'm gonna put in this webbing We go just drawing it out. I'll slow it down for you here. So this webbing at this joint, obviously, it became crucial. They may have ran a finite element analysis on this joint, which would show where it was weakest and where they needed to beef it up. They're doing the webbing because that'll make it very light instead of doing a solid structure. And a lot of times solid is not better than the engineered web approach. Like you see bridges built with uh, webbing like that. A lot of structural steel designs will have webbing like that. So you see all the webbing. I'm, I'm just looking at these other joints where the, the uh, knee is bent a little different to expose the webbing. And I just want to get it close at this point. No way am I going to take this and try to carry around a busload of kids or anything. Uh, we just want to prototype parts out, start messing around with uh, the joints, driving the joints, working the software, and then I can always come back and perfect these rigid fixed components. 
All right, there you see the webbing has come together. It's got a it's got a, about an eighth of an inch core to it, quarter of an inch um, center, and then of course it, it comes out about a half inch on each side. So now these holes, that the, that's where bearings will be pressed in. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those. I got to beef up a support so the bearing can can seat into that. So right now I'm changing my selection filter so it'll only select that that circle. Uh, if I didn't do that, it'd keep wanting to select the body. I just want to select the circle and put an offset to it about an eighth of an inch or so. Make that circle bigger. And an eighth of an inch is 0.125. There we go. And we'll extrude that out. And I do that by just clicking and then dragging it out, hitting the E key for extrude and then dragging it out. And I'll do this on the other side as well. And what that gives me is a place to shove the bearing. Now, actually, when I make this part, I'm doing this more just to uh, to show how it's going to be. I'm going to fill that that hole entirely. And once I spec my bearings, I'll cut them or I'll drill them out of the material, um, the you know the finished resin material. So I definitely won't just print it with this circle because I'll definitely find that the bearing I buy in the end. Is going to be a different dimension. There we go, nice and flush with the webbing and the and the outer outer perimeter there. Go back to select all. I'm going to grab that face and drag it through and do a join back through to the other side. There we go, and then now there looks like yeah I was stuck it out a little far, so I'm going to trim it back. Boom. Now both sides are symmetrical. Very good. I like that. Okay, so now let's see what else we can do. Um, need to get the other top hole where the linear actuator actually pulls on this joint. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll select the circle and then we'll run up and get the sketch offset feature. Drag it out there, get a good eighth of an inch. That way I got some meat on there. There we go. And one thing I see right now is it kind of doesn't make sense that this one, I, I kind of want that whole uh, outer cylinder to just morph into the top of that top of that uh, leg there. So let me go ahead and stretch this out and then I'm gonna uh, scale scale this thing out a little bit so that it'll um, morph right into that socket and then that, that way it'll be a very strong joint so when the linear actuator pulls on it I won't ever have to worry about that thing cracking apart. So let me first get it symmetrical and pull it through the other side. There we go. So it's a this whole thing is an inch wide. And then now I'm going to scale scale that one up. I'm editing the feature that I just laid and I'm scaling it up. I'm going to move it just just uh right click. There you go. Move, drag it over. And I'm going to drop it there. And because I'm editing the sketch, it actually takes all the features where I extruded and all that with it. So uh, it's, it, that's where Autodesk Fusion is amazing. If you look down at the bottom, there's a timeline of features down there. You can go back, instead of it just being an undo timeline, it's, you can go back to any feature along the timeline and adjust that feature. And then all the things you did, like to that sketch downstream will uh, be altered and so it, it just makes uh, making parts just so fast or designing parts so fast there we go you see how now i got it all morphed in there so definitely a, a beefier joint i'll press a bearing into that and now i'm just uh, combining those two so this is all one part as far as autodesk fusion is concerned that way i can uh, print out the drawings or I can export this simply I can export it straight to my 3d printer hit the print button and let that thing shoot out and then I'll, I'll uh, 
finish it up and then I'll make a mold of it and I'll cast it with a resin. So it'll be a nice white hard plastic, a little bit of flexibility to it by that long design it has where it's not webbed down there. So that'll give it a little spring in its step. And that pretty much is it. Autodesk Fusion. You use sketches to extrude to 3D objects and really it's that, that straightforward.